Yes, so we're looking at discovering kingdom purpose. Kingdom, sorry, we're looking at purpose, calling, and gifts in the kingdom of God. Amen? Purpose, calling, and gifts. So the last part I did was the calling. What are you called to do? When we look at business or we look at believers meeting together and discussing, getting into discussions, what are the things? What are the things you think we're discussing? First, first, the first thing that would dominate the discussions that believers are having is: Are you saved? What church you belong to? Who is your pastor? <clears throat> That's all. Are you baptized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the things. But then you don't really hear Christians meet to discuss business. Because we fail to understand that our purpose, number one purpose to be on earth is to dominate, to have dominion. Amen. To establish influence for God. And how do we establish influence for God? We establish it. We establish influence by having business, by taking over other systems. You get me? If one of us have a supermarket and we have 300 members in a church, those 300 members are supposed to visit that supermarket. And sister, you the supermarket, you're supposed to compete with other supermarkets. So that means you're not putting the price, exuberant price on us because you feel we must buy from you. You need to compete with others and give us the same, you know, benefits and even better, whatever you're doing. And I'm telling you, you already have a market without putting no ads on television. You just have to advertise where your supermarket is. That is how it's supposed to be. And we're supposed to support it. Another one has a gift. And you can do this very well. If what you are doing is very good and you can compete at the best level and you have the best, we're supposed to know about it. You're supposed to advertise it with us so that we could patronize. And I'm saying all that and I have said it before, is in the interest of having dominion. So then the monies we spend stays in the organization. It circulates. It moves from one person to another. So the person who has the supermarket and the other one who has the restaurant and this one who has the hair salon, and, you know, just name it. Everything is connected to kingdom business. Somebody give God praise. Amen. You are too quiet. Give God praise. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want to pray. I want to pray and then take you, hallelujah, into some kingdom teaching. Father, in the mighty name of King Jesus, we give thanks to you. We give praise to you. We give honor, oh God. We give glory to you today. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, oh God. Let those skills. Amen religious skills. Let it fall off our eyes. Remove the blindness in our eyes. The veil. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, remove those skills in our eyes that we yeah. can see the kingdom. Because that's what you said to Nicodemus. Unless someone is Amen. born, he will not see the kingdom of God. Lord, we need to Amen. see the kingdom. Help us see the kingdom today. That we can change our ways, change the way that we do things when we see the kingdom of God. Oh God, we need to see, we need to see, we need to see the kingdom. Let that blindness get off our eyes. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. That you know, hallelujah, what is, hallelujah, your calling. In the mighty name of King Jesus, my God, to you we give all the praise. To you we give the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of King Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Ah, he's just amazing. He's an amazing God. He's an amazing God. Hallelujah. He's an amazing God. Wow. You know, I need you to, I need to follow with me as I take you, as I take you 
into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Somebody give God praise. The kingdom of God is within you. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you look at the scripture and then you will see, oh, but prophet, Jesus never said to look for the kingdom of God outside there. You understand? Know, he said the kingdom of God is within you. But... But the question I would ask you, who was Jesus answering? Jesus was answering the scribe and the Pharisees. Amen? Who believed the kingdom of God was in their religious sect. So in other words, for one to talk about the kingdom of God, those Pharisees believed you had to be a Pharisee. So that is why Jesus had to point to them where the kingdom of God was, not in the external things that they were doing, but the kingdom of God had to be first has to begin inside of them. Let me just let me let me just go to the Bible here. Look, give me a second here. Luke 17, 20. Luke 17, 20 to 21. Let me just take you to, to this here. Yes, I need you to understand that. You need to look at, when you read the Bible, always look at the type of enemies that Jesus is facing. Because for every enemy, Jesus has an answer. Somebody give God praise. Don't sit too quiet on me. When I tell you give God praise, I want to hear your voice. So make sure that you are there. Amen? Amen. I'm at work, prophet. So that's why I cannot really flow. I'm at work. I'm moving on. Amen? Right, right. I understand. Luke 17, from verse 20. To 21. I want to show you something here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, so you need to underline that word. The people who asked him the question, what's a Pharisee? A Pharisee is a religious pretender. A Pharisee is one who is not true about what they do. They can tell you the right thing, but they will not do it. That's a Pharisee. Hello? Are you all following me? Just like human being. <laughs> Amen. The Pharisee can tell you everything, but go to their home. You're back at it. Amen? So one time Jesus said to the disciples, the things, do everything they ask you to do, but don't do what you see them do. Hello? Yes, they're telling the people what to do. So, and when Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, they asked him, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Because why he used the word observation? is because they one they were thinking of the kingdom coming in just a physical sense, only a physical sense. So when the kingdom of God come, so meaning like Jesus would take over the Romans and he will become, you know, um, a leader or become the president. So you know, they were waiting, you know, for, for that. When 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 did it come? Jesus said, "No, you will not even know when it come. It not come with observation. When the kingdom come, somebody give God praise. You will not see it. You will not see it when it reach on you." Hallelujah. At the time that Jesus answered the scribe and the Pharisees, 
the kingdom of God was already on earth, but it was only in Jesus. Hello? Somebody Amen. Amen. The kingdom Amen. was already on earth. It was already on earth, but the kingdom was present only in Jesus. What prophet the question? What was the Pharisees doing? What did they have? They didn't have the kingdom, they had religion. So religion was on earth before the kingdom, meaning that people were reading Bibles, praying and singing to God, even before the kingdom came. Somebody oh. give God to Yeah, yeah, prophet. Amen. Amen. I definitely have to repeat it. I definitely have to repeat it so that you can get it. Let me repeat this thing. Religion, again, people, were already on earth singing, mm. praying, amen, even teaching mm. the word of God before the kingdom of God came on earth. Mm. And their teachings were wrong because why? They only taught it at one level through observation, meaning that one would come as a king and there would Either there will be some form of war and he will just take over the Romans, destroy the Romans and establish the kingdom of God. And, mm. you know, Jesus would reign as king or Messiah would reign as king. That's what they taught the people. Okay. Hello. And that was never in God's program for the kingdom. So mm. now when Jesus came, the Pharisees who always study the wood, Asked him that question, and he said to them, it will not come with observation, meaning that the way you all say it, it will come, it will not come that way. Somebody will say, look it down there, eh, eh, the kingdom of God, you know, which you fought, or the kingdom of God is in St. Lucia, or, or, oh, no, look it, it just no. reached you know, in Jamaica, and everybody run to Jamaica, no, or the kingdom of God is Israel now, and everybody run to Israel, into the kingdom. He said, no, it will not come that way. Because that's how you all been teaching the people. Now, yeah. verse 21. You need to understand those things. Religion is not new. Has always been deceiving the people. Verse 21, he says, Neither shall they say, Lo, hero. Because somebody could, based on their teaching, somebody could say, Oh, look, the kingdom of God down there now. No, Jesus said, No, you can't even say hero. Or lo, there. You can't even say hero, or you can't even say it's there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Wow, what a revelation. What a revelation by Jesus. Amen. By that. Keep in mind he's speaking to the Pharisees. That's who right. never That's taught right. before. How could a man be born again? Now let's go back to Nicodemus. Jesus, didn't he say to Nicodemus that you must be born again? Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he Probably. enter a second time into his mother's and be born. Mm -hmm. Jesus now is teaching the Pharisees the same principle of giving birth. The kingdom of God is within you, meaning okay. that if it's not in you, if it's not in you, then you don't have it because the, the kingdom of God manifests from within. That's right. Hallelujah. Nothing Amen. about putting a sign on your church and calling it the kingdom of God or the kingdom hall. Or, or the church of Jesus Christ. You know, all those things are myths and false information about the kingdom. Okay. Hello? Okay. Prophet said, all those things, putting a name on a building, calling hmm. it church, or calling it this, and gathering people together, they are myths and false information about the kingdom because the kingdom of God begins within you. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 That's what Jesus was trying to teach, you know, the Pharisee. It is mm -hmm. a revelation that that is both from the heart. It is both from within you. God begins that change in you. That's right. Not something you have to join. It is a process that you go right. through. And when you go through this process, God uses it to influence people to himself. Somebody Amen. 
Amen. So now for the Pharisee, it was not within them. It was either here or there. Hmm. You remember that? Remember those words? Is here? Let me underline okay. it for you. That's how that's what it was. It was about hair. Let me underline hair. It could be hair or it could be there. Okay. Do you all see those words I underline? Okay. Make note of those words. Now, here and there represent religion. Oh, you go to church over here. Oh, I go to church over there. <laughs> you get it? That's what they mm -hmm. call the kid. Oh, where do you go to church? Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm there. Oh, down there. Up the road. I'm this and that. Now, that's not representing the kingdom. Of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, Let's see more. Let us see more. I'm keeping you in the wood. Let us see more. Remember, I tell you, keep, keep in mind that he's speaking to religious people, Pharisees. Verse 22. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come. What will come? The days. The days. Days for the Lord represent time. A time will come. Hello? Are you following me? Follow good. And let's see if that time is on us. The days or a time will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. That means Jesus is on, on earth and that time is now. People will desire to see one of those days where Jesus was on earth. And it's true. You understand? Mm -hmm. People wish they were living right now with Jesus in the earth, in his physical form. Some of them say, wow, things would have been greater. You would have been president. No, no, no that, that's hypocrisy. The same way they treated him, then it's the same way they'll treat him now. Amen? Because Amen. they don't want this. It's the same teachings he would give them. So he says, when ye, when ye shall desire to see one of the deeds of the Son of Man, that's Jesus, and ye shall not see it. You will not see it. You will not see it. You will not come in person you understand? Oh, for them to begin to believe. No, you will not see. It. And mm -hmm. they shall say to you, see here or see there. Go not after them and follow them. Prophet, underline it. Underline it. All those who run into to, to church and run into prophets and run into everywhere. We need to stop running and begin to learn. Hello? All right. The Lord says a day is coming. And he says, verse 23, and they shall say to you, see here and see there. In other words, see here. Holy Ghost fire, where they're blowing people and they're falling. Oh, no space to put people because they're blowing people and they're falling. See here and see there. You know, all kind of things happening. Oh, prophet, they're casting out demons here and people are screaming. Is that the kingdom of God? So because they are casting out devils and people are screaming, is that the kingdom of God? No. Nah. That's no sign of the kingdom. You're running here and there, and they're running here and there and sowing big monies and expecting miracles to fall from heaven. Is that the kingdom of God? No. That's not the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just Hallelujah. take you here and then I'm gonna take you back to my PowerPoint. So let's let's continue here. For as the lightning, as the lightning mm -hmm. that lighteth out of one part under heaven, shineth unto mm -hmm. the other part. That's how quickly it will happen. Under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in yes. his day. Amen. So when, when the Lord, when the Lord will make his appearance, sister, it will be like every, all eyes will see from, from the time he comes. You see, there's a light on one side and then the other side sees it. God said, when he comes, all eyes will see. You understand? <laughs> Nobody will have to tell you, run here or run there. And even that practice of running here and running there is supposed to stop. Amen. Get information before you run. Get information about the prophet whose person you run into. Too many people running and get oil over their head. Get your information before you run. 
we are living in the information age. Amen. I care how much a person prophesying. Get information before you run. Verse 25. But first must he suffer many things and then be rejected of this generation. Hallelujah. And as it was in the days of Noah or Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Listen to this. Big revelation is coming. They did it, they drink, and they married wives. Now, you see, King James, that version gives you the married wives. Another version said they were given in marriage. Now I need I I, I need to I need to come in here uh, with uh, the married wives. Fine. Okay, let's continue. And they were given in marriage. That's what I was looking for. Listen to this. There's a difference here. <laughs> Prophet, help us. Let me help you. Two marriages took place there. Did you see the King James showed you where they married wives? Hmm? Before, you know, the coming of the Lord. Now, it has always been they've been marrying wives. So it's husband and wife. But then there's another one that says they were given in marriage. It didn't say the married wife. They said they were given in marriage. That is same sex. Here is it. Here is the same sex. They were given in marriage. That's the same sex. They were married wives. That's the one the Lord. That's the one the, that's the, one the Lord ordered. Amen. A man shall shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave unto his wife and the two become one flesh. That's the one. They were given in marriage the same sex, a man with a man, a woman with a woman. The Bible says that those things, it says they did it, that's before the Lord comes back. Amen. You will get that a lot. And that's what we get in there. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So it happened in the time of Noah where same sex was the word, the ideal of the day for those men. The earth was so corrupt that God had to destroy people flood. What is happening to this? Same thing, same sex, everywhere. They are given in marriage, everywhere, given in marriage, man with man, woman with woman, you know, dominating the earth. And then disaster, disaster follows. Nothing different. Amen. Let me take you back now to my slide. Follow and follow well. So we saw we, we we saw what happened with the Pharisees. Okay, so I, I took you down to I took you um to that scripture. Let me just bear with me. Bear with me a few seconds. Make sure my slide, yes, did not move on me. Thank you, Jesus. Give me a second here. Give me a few seconds. Let me just move a few things. Sometimes technology. Technology doesn't allow you to see everything you're supposed to see. Let me see if I can see it from here. Okay. Misunderstanding about the kingdom. Let's look at some misunderstanding about the kingdom of God, although we have touched a few of them. One of the misunderstanding about the kingdom of God, miracles and healing are kingdom. Now, remember I said to you earlier, people can invite you to a healing or miracle service. And because you come there and you see the power of God there or people get healed, you say that's the kingdom. That's not true. That's, it does not represent the power of God in any building does not represent the kingdom. It really doesn't represent the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God begins within you. The kingdom of God, it is, it is God working within you to activate your, your purpose, your calling, and your gifts to work for him in the earth. Somebody give God praise. It has nothing to do about healing your neck, your back, your shoulder, or even casting out demons. It has nothing to do with that. 
The kingdom of God is about us having dominion in the earth. Amen. Bringing the influence of the king in our home, in our family, um, in our neighborhood, in our country, bringing the influence of our king over all other kingdoms. That is the kingdom of God. It has nothing to do with, with, with the healing and, uh, and, and the other stuff that people are looking for, and then they call it the kingdom of God. Follow me closely. Let's get the other one. Uh, let me get a pointer so, so that you could... You could follow with me as we follow as we look at the misunderstanding in the kingdom of God. All right, there is another misunderstanding. Somebody get that scripture, John chapter, John chapter eighteen verse thirty six. E, make sure you can read it when I call for it. Look for it quickly. John chapter eighteen verse thirty six. E, Jesus said. My kingdom is not of this world. So his kingdom cannot be on earth now. You see? But Jesus brought the kingdom with him when he came down to earth. Amen. He was the only one with the kingdom. So when they say that to you, they tell you, oh, the kingdom of God is not on earth. So they're waiting for it to come. The kingdom of God has already come. Jesus died on the cross. He established a kingdom. Pentecostal, Pentecost came. The Holy Ghost baptized the, the, the disciples. They spoke in tongues. 3,000 souls were added to them that day. They were added to the kingdom. You see how late we are? But then they will tell you, Oh, the kingdom of God, because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. They tell you it's not on earth. That is wrong interpretation of scripture. Um, somebody read this, read it, read it for me. Uh, John chapter 18, verse 36. So nobody did my homework. Okay, so I'll have, I'll have to go and read it. John 18, 36. You see, it's good to show it in the Bible. I can read it, prophet, for you. Yes, read it for me, my my, my brother. John 18, 36. Yeah. To show things in the Bible. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Okay. So... So hear what, hear, hear what Jesus said with the myth that they put on us. Amen. Who is Jesus speaking to? He's speaking to Pilate. Huh? Right? Verse 35, Pilate answered. Read from verse, read from verse 35, my brother. Pilate answered. Uh-huh. Am I a Jew? Uh-huh. You, your own nation, and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered now. J Jesus Continue. answered. Mm -hmm. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. So that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of is not from hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You see, it's amazing what the Lord is saying here. Now, I, I'm, I like it because people who, who bring scriptures, who interpret scriptures, my kingdom was of this world. Somebody give God praise. My servants, my servants would fight. You see, so he has a kingdom, but his kingdom is not from here. Amen. His kingdom is not from here. If it was from here, his servants would fight for him. So in correcting this myth, when they say, okay, when they bring the, 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 the myth to us by, let, 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 let me bring it to the myth um, that some people, some people are bringing to you. 
in terms of the deception about the kingdom of God by telling you, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Hold on, let me remove something here. My kingdom is not of this world. So his kingdom cannot be on earth, on earth now. Jesus was speaking to Pilate in correspondence to him, Jesus, having a kingdom. And he told Pilate, my kingdom is not from below, but it is from, it is from above. Amen? So he had no servant there because he had not relinquished his kingdom in the earth then. The kingdom was only one part. It was only one part of the kingdom. It was within him. It was within him. Now, let me show you something about the kingdom. If you continue this discourse and even the life of Jesus, when they came to him in the garden, look at how much he's correct. When they came to him in the garden and said, I am he, they fell. All right. When the soldiers held him, didn't Peter, did Jesus, did Jesus ever ask Peter to pull the knife? Didn't Peter just pull his sword and cut the servants? Eh? That's how it operates in the kingdom. They fight for him. So, so what Jesus was simply saying there, he had to first die. He had to first die for his kingdom to be established in this earth. He's not establishing his kingdom illegally because without his death, without death, you understand? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or no forgiveness of sin. So his kingdom could not have been established before he goes to Calvary. And even before he went to Calvary, Peter had already cut a man's hair to show you that it was so close in coming. So even back then, the kingdom was already established. By the time Jesus went to Calvary, as I said to you, he established the kingdom for us to reign in the kingdom of God for the laws of the kingdom to govern the earth. That is why. And his servants will not fight against the will of God. It was the father's will for him to go to Calvary. And if you, if you study his discourse in Gethsemane when he prayed, he said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. So it was the father's will for his servants not to fight, but for him to die and for the kingdom to be established. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you got this one. And don't be deceived when people tell you, oh, the kingdom is not established yet. It's established from the time he went to Calvary. Let's get, let's get another myth, you know, deception. Somebody will say to you, um, my brother, you can get to, to those scriptures. One person get, somebody take Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Another person take Matthew 26, 29. Another person take Luke 14, 15. It's very important that I present those things to you on the kingdom. It's very important. Some, someone will say to you, there is no food in the kingdom because it is all spiritual. Oh, the kingdom of God is all spiritual. Is it? Is it all spiritual? Like religion will tell you, okay, just come into the kingdom of God, wait for the rapture first to go to heaven. Is it all spiritual? Uh huh. Let's look at somebody read Romans chapter 14, verse 17 for me, please. Hey, move fast. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Is it seven, Apostle? Romans chapter 14. Uh -huh. What is this? Verse 17. I have it, prophet. Yes, go ahead, my brother. Read it. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For the kingdom of God is not, read it again, read it again whilst I get to the point that somebody will bring to you to try to 
confuse you. Read yours, for let me, and then I'll come to. Uh huh. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now they will say to you, here is another myth. Somebody will say to you, oh, you all saying you all, you, all, you are into kingdom. Oh, you all say you are into kingdom. I have I have a scripture. So then, they, so, so then they read Romans chapter 14, verse 17 that says, it's not um, eating and drinking, it's righteousness, you know, and, and, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So you, they're telling you there is no food in the kingdom because it is spiritual. So they, they quote only one scripture they quote only one scripture, close their Bible, run, and they deceive you. Read now, read Matthew 26, 29. Let's, let's see something. Mm -hmm. So they get one scripture that says, oh, it's, it, there is no food there. It's righteousness. Uh -huh. So then if we say, if we say um, we have the kingdom of God, and then we're talking about carnal things or whatever, whatever, whatever we're talking about is not the kingdom of God. We need to correct that. Yes, read that other scripture for me now. But but I say unto you, I will not drink Heron's cup of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. So then it's not a contra it's, 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 it's not contradicting. No, because that one, if Romans is not eating and drinking righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit, okay. So then they said to you, if we if we say we are in the kingdom and then we want to talk to people about doing business, getting to a restaurant, getting food, then no, it's not the kingdom. But Jesus said, I will not eat with you now until I eat with you again in, in the kingdom. So that means you can eat in the kingdom. Huh? That's right. Uh-huh. So when they when they'll tell you, oh, the kingdom of God. So if we eat in, then it cannot be the kingdom of God. That's not true. Jesus is saying that in the kingdom is lots of eating. There's a lot of eating in the kingdom. There's banquet. If you, if you follow even some of the parables and the banquet and everything is in the kingdom. The kingdom has more food in it than anything. Amen? So it, 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 is, a, it is a part of the kingdom for the, the bride and the bridegroom because that's what it's about to eat. To, 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 to feast, you understand? The kingdom of is about, is, is about this. Look, look, read Luke chapter 14, verse 15 for me. Mm -hmm. Luke 14, 15. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, it's good. It's, it's good to have everybody involved. You see, that's why when I when I give the scriptures, it will keep people alert. Look, but I'm still putting on screen. Luke chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. Read it when you get it. Now, when now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him. Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The word of God speaks for itself. Blessed is he who eats bread in where? Where are they supposed to eat the bread? The kingdom. In the kingdom of God. Somebody give God praise. You shall yes. never be deceived when they come, you know, with their misconceptions when they come with their deception to tell you, oh, the kingdom of God is only spiritual. So then you should not talk about doing business, having supermarket. Blessed is he who eats bread in the kingdom of God. Bread, the universal food. So what is God saying? If you go back to Genesis 1, if you go back to Genesis 126, somebody go, somebody get it. Get, get Genesis 126. You see our purpose is to have dominion. You understand? Bread is universal. Bread, bread also represents food. So you could have business. The kingdom of God is about business. Amen. 
you 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 could have bakery you could have supermarket you could do all kind of business you can you can have things that would feed people they meant food for the stomach you see the kingdom of god takes care of the needs of people somebody mm. give god please read genesis 126 and you will discover that was man's purpose in the earth god said to them have dominion even god mentioned some areas you know they who should be dominating, amen. Do business, do no, blessed is he. You look, look 14 15. Blessed is he with bread. Anybody had Genesis 126? Read it for me, please. That God said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the beasts, and over all the earth. And over everything that creeps upon the earth. My God, everything mentioned there is used today in business. Fish. Fish is one of the biggest industries we have now. Amen. God said, have dominion over the fish of the sea. Have dominion over the sea, you can have both. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, you could have the fish too. Hallelujah. You could have the you could have the salt water. You could do God said, have dominion is dominion. Even the sun, you know. Of this, on the seashore have made houses, have made bricks and so many things. Have dominion is a have dominion. So from Genesis, when God made man, he gave man wealth. Somebody give God praise. Amen. God said have dominion. So look, and Jesus said, you know, there blessed is he, you understand, that have bread. Look, look it, it's in Luke 14, 15. So, so when they tell you the kingdom is only spiritual, do not allow that enter into your head because that's what religion have done to most persons, have them to operate in only one facet of their life. They only build their spiritual life, but they do not build, you know, the other areas of their lives, like the business life. They don't build their family life, you know, socialize um, the, 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 the social life. You know, and, and so much of it, we don't build this thing. We definitely have to look at, you know, those deceptions when when they come. Let's look at another one. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Let me just read this. Seeking God's kingdom means doing ministry or getting baptized. Yeah. Amen. Um. Is is seeking is is this correct? Seeking God's kingdom means doing ministry or getting baptized? No, no. If you go back to John chapter three, somebody go to John chapter three, the discourse between Jesus and Nicodemus. So because Jesus mentioned to Nicodemus, you shall be baptized. To enter into the kingdom of God, religion make you believe if you get baptized, you're already in the kingdom. But you see, you always look at the enemy, always look at the opposition that Jesus had. Jesus is speaking to a Pharisee. Okay. Now there, Jesus is speaking to yes. Go ahead. Now there was a certain man among the mm. Pharisees, Nicodemus, a ruler of a leader of authority mm. among the. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain that you have come from God. Mm -hmm. We are okay. certain that you come from God. Uh -huh. For no one can do these things, these signs, mm -hmm. these wonderful works, or those miracles that you do unless God is with him. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again anew, he cannot ever see or know or acquire or experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the, his mother's womb again and be born? Jesus answered, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, Unless a man is born of water and even the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Stop there. Stop there, please. 
Very good. Unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Was Jesus speaking there about baptism? No. Jesus is speaking to a Pharisee. Okay. Jesus is speaking to a man who believes he's already in the kingdom. Jesus is speaking to a man who is, who is a teacher of the word in their religion. So Jesus is saying, being born again of water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The reason why Jesus brought it so to him, for to give him an understanding of the process that he has to go through. Water in the mind of Nicodemus, which he didn't question the water, water is used for washing. So Nicodemus would understand a washing has to take place. Amen. The washing of your sins or whatever. It has nothing to do with, with putting him in, in the water. Amen. But where Nicodemus was confused is how can he enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? He didn't ask him, where is it? Where do I get baptized? Is it in the river Jordan? Nothing so. So if Nicodemus did not raise this whole baptism um, 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 subject, he didn't even mention about the baptism of John or Nicodemus could have raised any of those talk and it was not relevant. He never raised those talk. So it was not baptism he was talking about, but water was a symbol of washing, a symbol of cleansing that even Nicodemus understood. So baptism is not, you know, seeking God's kingdom means doing ministry or getting baptized. Baptism is no guarantee that you are in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's no guarantee. This thing is birth. This thing is birthed within you. There are people who are baptized and they're still not in the kingdom. Religion puts it that will say, oh, because you get baptized, oh, welcome into the kingdom of God. Really? Welcome into the religion. You have that no guarantee that you have entered the kingdom of God. Doing ministry is no guarantee that you have entered into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God comes, it, 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 it is birthed within you. It is the Holy Spirit ancient. It is an anointing where the Lord draws you into your purpose, into your calling. He draws you into your gifts. You are drawn, you are propelled by the Spirit of God to do things that glorifies King Jesus in the earth. That is how one enters into the kingdom of God. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Let's look at another one. Well, kingdom. Hello. Well, listen to verse 6. Yes, it says, what is born of or from the flesh is flesh, but or physical. But what is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. So what is born of the flesh, I just was explaining to Nicodemus, anything born of the flesh is flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. So he's talking to him about a spiritual birth. Amen. Mm -hmm. This thing will be birthed in you. That's what I'm saying to you. The kingdom of God is within you. It has, it has to be born in you. You know, so it, it might take somebody some time in religion even before they enter into the kingdom of God. Because until religion begins to not make sense to you, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. But as long as religion is good and is making sense and you are enjoying it, you will, not, you, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. When religion begins not making sense to you, that's the time you will seek God for more. And that's the time God will direct your spirit for you to enter into the kingdom of God, and we call that being born again. You come to the awareness of your calling, your purpose, your gifts, and everything you're supposed to do to glorify King Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Kingdom, another, another one, another deception that they put on people. Kingdom means going to church on Sunday, or let me put it that way, going to church on a Saturday. Going to church does not mean you are in the kingdom of God. Even witches go to church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Going to church every day and being on time, standing on the altar, even preaching, does not mean you are in, into the kingdom of God because I explained the kingdom of God already. These are just camouflage. 
getting closer to God. Some people say, oh, I am in a moment of fasting now. You see, January, well, you see, when the year ends and when the year begins, and I, I get into my 40 days fast. So I am fasting. I am fasting to hear from God. I am fasting for this, you know, getting closer to God. Does that mean you are in the kingdom of God? Listen to me. Fasting or reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is no guarantee that you are in the kingdom of God. Amen. This change must take place. It must take, it must take place in your spirit. This transition from caterpillar to butterfly, you know, this pain, this, you need to go through a level of pain before you can enter into the kingdom of God. You need to have something seeking. That's why the Bible says, seek the kingdom. You need to have something to cause you to seek for more or seek better, you know, to enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you have gone through this process, and some of you right now, you are seeking God for something better, and congratulations on this. That's how God moves you into the kingdom. That's how he reveals dreams and purpose to you. By you seeking. That's why he said, seek first the kingdom of God. He never said, I will give you the kingdom. He tells you, you have to seek that kingdom. You have to find it. Other scriptures tell you, the kingdom of God is like a lost coin. You understand? You, ha you, 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 you have to find this coin. The kingdom of God, you know, is, is out there. You understand? So then you are seeking for it. So what causes you to seek? Many things cause people to seek. People seek because they are hurting. People seek because they are wanting. People seek things because they have needs. So unless that need and their desire to be better, live better, have it better, unless that has come into your life, you will never enter into the kingdom of God because nobody can seek it for you. You have to seek it yourself. Amen? So getting closer um, to God, whatever you are doing, you can do 40 days fast. That doesn't mean you are into the kingdom. Wow. Wow. Prophet, tell me more deceptions about the kingdom. Another one tell you, kingdom will come only during the millennial millennial reign. When Jesus Christ come back, you know, spend a thousand years with Christ. That's the time the kingdom will come. Lie. The kingdom is already here. The king came. He died. And I said that to you before. He died to establish the kingdom. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came to confirm, put a stamp over it and say the kingdom is here and baptize the believers and send them out. Holy Ghost filled. Amen. Hallelujah. And they went to a place like Antioch and they were behaving just like Christ. Cast now demons with and the people called them Christians. But they were first kingdom before they were Christian. The world called them Christian. But the Lord never called them Christian. They were first, they were just doing the work of the kingdom. So it's not the millennial. But I respect the millennial, the millennial amen, reign of Christ. I respect everything with it. But because if you're going to wait for it, then you will wait too late. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom is already here. This is progression. Millennial is progression. Somebody give God grace. Hallelujah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Prophet, tell me more. Tell me more. More about deceptions about the kingdom. Kingdom is only for the Jewish people. <laughs> kingdom is only for the Jewish people. So then they tell you, oh, the kingdom is for the Jewish people. So then the book of Matthew was written um, um, for the Jews. So Paul was um, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and Peter was the apostle to the Jews. So then I ask you, who are the Jewish people? So some people look at, you know, the present day Israel, and they said, oh, those persons you see in Israel, they are the Jewish people. Wow, I have, I, I, I have a different understanding on this, and I have a lot of information in terms of Jews and things. But the kingdom of God, there's a scripture that says, you know, the kingdom is, is, okay, let me just take you to the scripture where Jesus said, where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, you know, first to the Jews, then to, then to the Gentiles. Amen. So the kingdom of God is not just for the Jewish people. The kingdom of God is for all people. Prophet, uh, let, me, let, let, let me take you Romans. Uh, go to Romans chapter 1 verse um, 16 with me quickly. Amen. Take, get to your Bibles. Romans is not just for the Jewish people. 
is for God's people. Amen? Let nobody fool you. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Amen. Well, it is a nice discourse. It's almost like a Bible study, but then we definitely needed to look at it. Romans 1, 16. Yes. Where's my reader? Go ahead, read it. I'm not hearing you. Mary. Okay, sorry, I was muted. It says, For I am not ashamed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel or the good news of Christ. For it is the it is God's power working unto salvation. For deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and confidence around the, the and firm reliance to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Amen. So that's Paul preached the gospel. Now he's speaking of the, the gospel of the kingdom. So Paul preached the gospel of the and he said he's not ashamed of it. And he tell you whom it belongs to. It, be, it belongs to all people, both to the Jews and to the Greek. Amen. So the kingdom of God, let's read it in a different version, King James Version. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, or the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Underline that. So when they tell you it's just, oh, the kingdom of God is only for the Jews. No, they lie. There is it. Take them to that scripture. Is for everyone that believeth, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. Hello? Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Give, amen. 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 So the kingdom of God is for everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not about religion. It's not amen. for religion. It's not about religion. It is all about the kingdom. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Amen. And amen. You shall not be deceived. You shall not be deceived about the kingdom of God in the mighty name of King Jesus. Hallelujah. So many different aspects of your kingdom. So many different aspects of your kingdom. Oh God, when we enter into one aspect, there are other aspects of the kingdom that you have to enlighten us on. As we go through trials, as we go through the different tests, Heavenly Father, the different things that are coming to test us, Heavenly Father, is for us to be even better enlightened about your kingdom. Oh God, take us deeper. Take us higher, Heavenly Father, into your kingdom that we can be of use to the master. We can be of use to you, Heavenly Father, as we discover our purpose, calling, and gifts. Hallelujah. Be useful. Be useful to the master. Hallelujah. Master, we give you the praise. We give you the honor, Lord. We give that glory to you. You be glorified. You be glorified in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we pray that everyone, Heavenly Father, who seek the kingdom, everyone who is seeking the kingdom now, whatever is causing them to seek the kingdom, so let it be. Whatever is causing them to seek the kingdom, let it be. Whether it's pain, whether it is hunger, whether it is lack or disappointment from friends, from fellow men, disappointment, Heavenly Father, from things, whatever is causing us to seek the kingdom, Lord, so let it be that we all can find the kingdom and live the life that God has called us to live. To you, we give all the praise. We give the honor and that glory. In the mighty name of King Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah.